Hello, my name is Carrie Waltz. Thank you for joining me today. I appreciate your time and I share tips, tools, and techniques for the artist in you. And today is a focus on a limited palette and solving a problem that I had while I was hiking and painting on location in the Smoky Mountains. Most of the time when I hike, I take a small kit with me that weighs about maybe a half to two thirds of a pound. And I was having trouble balancing the two limited palettes that I took. And so I have altered that and I'm going to share my solution with you today. I'm also going to share with you how I deal with atmospheric perspective using watercolor, but it works in any medium, whether it's oil, pastel, acrylic, and how I painted the waterfall in watercolor. So stay tuned and give me a thumbs up if any of this is helpful. Please subscribe to my channel. Thank you to all of those who you already have. Really appreciate your support. This is the watercolor kit that I took hiking with me in the Smoky Mountains recently. And as you can see, well, when I keep my hands off of it, it weighs about 10 ounces. I want to show you what's in that kit. I have decided as I hike that I really like to keep what I'm painting on and all my painting products separate so that I can just yank it out and then push, put this kind of to the side while I'm painting. I take these out. That's what I paint with. Here's my water brush. I'll, uh, put a photo over, superimpose a photo over this of what I take, and I'll list it down below. But when I have this separate bag, I can just keep it in the bag and not have things fall on the ground. When I was hiking, I decided I wanted to take an extra limited palette that had different colors. And these are the colors that are in each one. And when you look at them, let me turn this around, so there's two yellows, two red options, two blue options, and then a, a convenience color. I consider the purple, the dioxazine purple convenient and burnt sienna convenient. And burnt sienna plus the ultramarine really make a wonderful dark. So I don't have to worry about any blacks and that kind of thing. If I want to make something darker, these two are nice and dark too. So, um, But I wanted a little more options than just this palette. Most of what I did in the Smokies was with this particular palette. The answer to my problem of dropping my palette was purchasing a small clipboard, finding a refrigerator magnet that I no longer can use because my refrigerator is stainless steel and doesn't hold pretty magnets on the front and I don't have enough room on the side. I've flipped that over on this one. I've already taped it down, so this is the one I'm going to use. And these will hold really well. I'm right-handed, so I want my paint on the right side, and then I'll have my journal here. So this will sit much easier in my lap. It gives me support for not only my palette, but my drawing. So I, if you're left-handed, you would just flip it around, and if you're using paper, you can just clip your paper to this. I, could, I can also clip my journal to that if my journal is not too thick. So you know, I just think this will be a good thing for me. Just a reminder when you want to get atmospheric perspective that you have less intense colors in the distance. They're blurred. There's more water. And so when I painted the sky, I also came in and painted some of the water down here. And as this was drying, then I came over here and painted a little heavier. And your darkest darks are what's up close and the verticals. So just a reminder of some things as you plan your painting when you're outside that will be helpful hopefully to you and with watercolor you need to leave your lights and because the light the white of the paper is often the whites in your painting i do have a white pen that i come back and uh, adjust and help with that's how i got this part right here i did painted it with or used a white pen to draw the the branch and then i came back over with pale blue because that was what was reflecting from the sky on these white trunks. It was a lot of fun. This one was painted on location, and this is where I kept dropping all my paint. It kept falling off my lap. I was sitting on a rock. But I think when I began this one, the thing to do is, when you're looking at something that's vastly larger than, uh, you know, you, you, you can't really back up because you're on a rock, and if you back up, you're down the hill. And you're looking at something that's really tall, in relation to what you're painting is take your pencil and put a like a little mark at the top where you're going to begin and visually measure the size of what you're looking at like this upper section of the falls was a little smaller than this lower section not much smaller but a little so 
I put a tick mark here and a, and a diagonal line here to indicate where that was. And then another diagonal line where the rocks start down here. So that gave me a beginning point to measure from. And then I looked to see where the ledges, how many divisions were in that section. So I put a little line here, a little line here, and that gave me reference points. Now it looks like the water is white. It isn't. When I first started, I got pale, pale blue. And remember, watercolor dries lighter than when you paint it. So what I did is I painted where the water was. Very, very pale blue. And then, while that was drying, I painted the distance. Remember, when you use, you want to show atmospheric perspective, you water down, lighten the distance, and it's not in focus as well as what's up close. So I painted that while this was drying. And then I mixed some darker colors. And I had to do several layers, but I wanted to lay in where my darkest darks were. Normally, I wait for the last part of that, but because the watercolor is going to dry lighter, I wanted to know where the water was. So I put in some darks where the, the rocks were the darkest. And again, I had to come back later and make that darker. But what that allowed me to do is just kind of frame in on either side where my water would be. So that was helpful for me. And I decided after painting this one that, wow, I really like the leaving of the edges where it's not even a rectangle. If you notice all these others, I go up all the way to the outside edge and there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, I don't tape it or anything. It's not, that's not convenient to do. Um, but when you go all the way to the outside edge, it just gives it a different look. But what I love about this Sorry. When I realized that, it's like, wow, let's do that again. So I, did, I decided to do that on this one in our next lunch spot. And I just indicated a little bit of greenery down below. The distant hills when you squint, be sure to squint when you're outside. Because if you can just kind of get a hint of the colors back there that you see, spring hadn't really hit full force yet. So there were some trees that were budding that kind of gave a mauve color, but they, they weren't bright yet. And you saw a little bit of the outline of some pine trees in the distance and just enough to give it a hint as to where you are. And pay attention, when I started on this one, I again looked to how tall the trees were standing above the distant hill. So I put a little tick mark with my pencil here and I noted where this line of the uh, distant hill was and then another line of the foreground so when you're painting outside in landscape you want to at least get a foreground midground background i think that gives you a, a much better uh, illusion of depth also remember that you mute you're not not any bright deep colors should be back there if you want to show distance the way I want to show distance here is muted, paler colors, more detail in the front. Notice I, you know, even the distant trees here are muted. And then when I want to focus on what I want, what, what caught my attention was this, the shape of this, this tree next to the one that had died. So I wanted to capture these side by side and show the height of what I was looking at. So you don't have to finish out the edges of your watercolor paintings. And I think that's that was really fun. And it was just kind of a, oh, huh, how about that? That worked. I think I'm going to enjoy this magnet. I'm about to go to a local college and walk around and attempt to paint something there and test this out. So next week's video, if it turns out, will be what I do there. So when I add the additional piece... It is still less than a pound, so I'm okay with that. Yay!